Hello, everyone in the house, and welcome to the Straightway TV with your host, Usama Dakdok. Usama, welcome back. Hello, good morning. What do you want to talk about in this program? We will continue with lies in the textbooks as we emphasize on the fact that these are lies taught to our children in our public schools all over America by uh, uh, our tax money. We are allowing the Muslim to indoctrinate our children to believe in propaganda's Islam. Propaganda Islam. All right, let's get started. By the way, his website is thestraightway.org, thestraightway.org. We're here in our Memphis, Tennessee studios, just outside of Memphis, and uh, we're pleased to produce this program along with many other programs as we continue to be America and the world's premier biblical worldview and radio television network online. Hope you're telling your friends about the program and the other programs you carry, as well as our free app that allows them to take the program on the go with them. Uh, worldviewweekend.com forward slash app is where you can download the free app worldviewweekend.com forward slash app thank you for telling your friends about our ministries our broadcast ministries uh, so we can grow and the best way we can grow is by you telling your family and friends about this biblical resource amen all lies, right lies about the history of islam uh, they're telling our children uh, so much propaganda they are actually rewriting the history they're making Islam with a brand new history, not the history which I, I was taught in Egypt, not the history which is written all over our books. It's just new history just for you Americans. Mm -hmm. How do you like that? Wow. And to remind everybody, Usama was not uh, raised as a Muslim. He mm -hmm. lived in Egypt. He was friends with Muslims, raised with Muslims, but he himself was born into a Christian home. His father planted churches. His, ba his father was a Baptist minister, planted churches all over Egypt. Yes, indeed. So a lot of people get confused, think he's a you know a former M Muslim. He was and, never and, a Muslim. And, and, and please, do not call me Obama. It is <laughs> Usama. Please. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's move on. Uh, first book we'll be talking about is World History. And okay. Brother Brandon, Here's tell what, us what they're telling our children. World History Patterns of Interaction, page 270. So this is what would be in that book that kids will be learning here sure. in America. Mm -hmm. Quote, the persecuted people often welcomed the Muslims the Muslim invaders, and chose to accept Islam. They were attracted by the appeal of the message of Islam, which offered equality and hope in this world. You know, if I know anything besides what I'm reading right now to be an oxymoron, that is an oxymoron. No, no kidding, Brennan. When, when, you, when you read these words, do, do our teacher really use their brain as he maybe shares this material with our, I understand children will believe whatever the teacher mm -hmm. says, but does the teacher have brain to think about what they're teaching our, our children? The, so when the Muslim invaders went to Egypt, the Egyptian danced in the street and they were saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that Muhammad and his people coming to kill our fathers and our brothers and to rape our mothers and our sisters. And they were dancing all over the street. They welcomed them. Does this, make any, does this make any sense to anybody? If you just tell somebody some, that some invaders went to some land, don't mention any names, and the people of the land were so happy and so excited to have the invaders, that does, this, that, does this make any sense? No, it doesn't make any sense at all. How in the world does he teach this to our children? Because the average taxpayer has no idea what Islam is really all about, much less what's in the textbooks. And then they said that, that the, 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 the invaders have this great message of equality and hope. Since when somebody go invade somebody, give him a message of equality. Now, I'm going to invade, in, invade your country. I'm going to take your homes. I'm going to take your life. I'm going to destroy you. And here is, this that's, that's, that's a message of equality. We're equal now. Hmm. Uh, here is my hope I would like to share with you. It is a nonsense after nonsense after nonsense. I don't know. Lord, help us. How in the world our teacher can utter these words to our children or allow our children to read this word in any textbooks. Um, we we in, in Egypt were very attractive, attracted to the to Islam and to the Muslims. That is what this bread began to teach in our public school. Okay, let's uh, look at a quick response. Our response, uh, the, what we should actually be teaching is Absolutely. Muslim invaders were often feared, not welcomed, because of well-known massacres and oppression of non-Muslims. Passage uh, incorrectly implies that Christianity did not offer equality and hope. Sure, do it so for a second. If Islam brought hope to the Egyptian, for example, I'm, I'm going to use my home country as, a, as, a, as an example. And if Islam brought the message of equality, that means Christianity in Egypt for 641 years did not have hope, and Christianity in Egypt did not have equality. We were... Uh, uh, people living in, in different levels of life, you know, slaves and masters. That's, but that's not true. This is propaganda lie. Egyptians have all the hope in Christ. 
And when these invaders came to destroy our land, they took this hope out of us. And praise God for the godly men and women who run for their life, uh, leaving their homes, their land, going somewhere else in Egypt to continue to live the hope in Christ. And uh, it's just unbelievable. I, I'm just thinking, why can't we have a debate someday to ask the people who wrote this propaganda, this hogwash Islam to our children to prove it? Hmm. I mean, as I told you, Brandon, before in our, as we, we begin this study, not one of these lies has been proven by a word from Allah, from the Quran, not by one of the teaching of Muhammad in the Hadith, as we're going to see in this study, the opposite is true. Not any historian, historian record. I mean, so where does he come up with this lie? How in the world we allow Muslims to teach this propaganda to our children? I don't know. Third point here is the Arab conquerors massacred the entire Christian population uh, in uh, Nikio. Nikio, in, that's six, in Egypt. In mm -hmm. Egypt, in 640 AD, as part of their invasion of Egypt. So as they went to the land, they found this Christian, kill them all. Maybe that is a message of hope. Maybe that is a message of equality. Kill the Christian in many cities all over Egypt. And, uh, and others who felt sorry for the, for the women and the children, they only killed the husbands and the older brother. But the women and the children, they kept them as concubines, as slaves, mm -hmm. so they can raise the Muslim babies. And that's how we have Muslims today in, the, in Egypt. That's one reason why they are allowed to have up to four wives. Absolutely. The whole idea is, is basically a breeding program for Islam, right? It, Muhammad, Muhammad, yes, absolutely. Muhammad enticed men with women on earth. We're going to go fight the Turkish. And the Turkish have this blue-green eyes, the white skin, they're European. And uh, we're going to kill the men and we're going to have all these women. Each one of you have as many, and the four free Muslim women, we're going to talk about it later, when we talk about lies about women in Islam. These are the free Muslim women whom, uh, uh, with their choice, willing to marry the Muslim men. But the concubines and the slaves, unlimited number. And then the Muslims say, wait a minute, Muhammad, what if we got killed? I mean, we're going to go fight and get killed. Muhammad said, don't worry. You get killed, you get to paradise. There are 72, not just uh, whatever now, 72 forever versions for you. So he enticed men on earth by women and eternity by women. And that's how Islam started. So uh, how the Christian were treated in Egypt is so sick. It's so sad. Four million Christian men were killed in the first 100 years. Just in the first 100 And then from the wives and the daughters of these men, the nation of Islam in Egypt exists because we do not have any females immigrate to Egypt from mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia. All what we have is the army of Omar with hundreds of thousands of men. They forgot to bring females with them because, you know, in Egypt there are beautiful women. And that's how all the Egyptian Muslims today, 80% or so of the Muslims in Egypt today, are the result of the rape. 80% of the Muslims where? In Egypt, because we're roughly going around 20% Christian or maybe a little bit less, maybe 18% Christian. But the rest, uh, all the Muslims in Egypt, 80, 82%, are the children of rape. These are the, the children who were born to an, a Christian woman after she was raped by a Muslim man. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. And that's the truth about the invasion and the invaders. Nobody in Egypt ever welcomed any Muslim. We do not have joy to have the Muslim to come to invade our country. That mm -hmm. is a lie from the bottom of hell. And then we read another fact we should be we teaching should, is the population was forced to pay jizya, 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 which is also like a dimitude. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or tribute or tax is what it would really be, right? That's what it is. It is the money you pay to live. Yeah. You pay you this money, we let you live. I, I love it when I talk to my, one of my teachers in school in Egypt, and he said, well, it's a little money. It's not much money. Anybody can afford it. And I said, well, how much is money? He said, like a dollar. I said, are you trying to tell me that your Allah believe if I don't give you a dollar, you cut off my head? Is my head worth a dollar to you? He didn't have an answer. He said, dumb. you know, if you say a thousand dollars, that make my head worth a little bit, you know, have some value in it. But if I don't give you a dollar, you cut off my head? How ridiculous is how cheap this Allah is and the Muslims are. Mm. Anyway. The Coptic Christian rose in rebellion in 725 AD. Now, ask a question. If the Coptic have this revolution, rebel against the Muslim. Just less than 60 years after they were invaded, 70 years after they were invaded. How can you tell me that they were so happy, mm -hmm. joyful, to have the Muslim to come to invade our country? <laughs> right. when, when, people re, when people go in, a, in rebellion, when they're happy, when they're mm -hmm. excited about the new invader? Nonsense. So what they teach our children cannot be supported historically. 
as they cannot support chronically, cannot support by the hadith. There's no, it's just pure lie. And people get upset when I say Muslim lie. Yes, indeed, they are professional liars. They are the children of the best deceiver, Satan himself, who is the father of all liars. Mm -hmm. The notion that the population welcomed the Arab Muslims is nonsense. That's what it is. It's literally nonsense. And, and we don't say nonsense because we just uh, have some logic, because that's the truth. I mean, if you have logic without knowing any knowledge, it is, it is a logic, mm -hmm. but the truth. And how we prove the truth? By simply reading the Quran, by simply reading what Muhammad taught the Muslim in the Hadith. Investigate Islam, investigate the history of Islam, the true history of Islam. Not the history they teach our children in America. Not the history they teach our that's, children. That's yeah. a propaganda history. You'll find out that everything they taught us in America about Islam is nothing but the opposite of the truth. It's a bunch of lies. Let's look at the Quran, Quran chapter 98, verse 6, and read what Allah taught the Muslims. Surely those who became infidels from the people of the book and the polytheist will abide in the fire of hell forever. Those are the worst of the creatures. So where is that quality? Remember, the lie was very simple. The message of Islam shows the equality and the hope of all people. Equality means what? Black, white, rich, poor, men, women, slave, all equal. That is the, the truth about the word equality. But do we see in the Quran any verses where Allah said, you are all equal. Hmm. All sons of Adam and children of Adam are equal. And love one another and live in harmony with one another. No. Allah in that verse, chapter 98, verse 6, is declaring to us that the people of the book, we're going to talk another lie about the people of the book a little bit later, another, another program. But the people of the book, will abide in hell forever, and they are the worst of the creatures. They are the, they're the wicked of the wicked. Who? The Christian and the Jew. Why? Because they are infidels. Because they did not believe in Allah. They did not believe in Muhammad. Is this a message of hope? Is this the message of, of equality? Of course, that is a lie. Let's move to another Quran, chapter 8, verses 22 and 23. Surely the worst creatures before Allah are the deaf, the dumb, those who do not understand. And if Allah knew of any good in them, he would have made them hear. And if he had made them hear, they would still have turned away and withdrawn. Does this verse teach that all people are equal? Or they show us another type of creatures who are the worst of the creature, like the Christian and the Jew, the people of the book. And this case is the deaf and the dumb. Uh, and, and, and Muhammad is telling us that Allah created him that way because he knows there's nothing good in them. And if, he, if even Allah makes him to hear and to see, this still will not be good. Well, tell this to the man Jesus healed. You see, he was deaf. Mm -hmm. He was dumb. He couldn't hear. He couldn't speak. To the point that disciples asked Jesus, who sinned this is? Did this man sin that badly? Or maybe his, mommy, his mom and dad, or his parents were very bad people. That's why God made this man to not be able to hear or to, or to speak. But, or, or all these people who God causes to be born with some handicapped uh, existence. And Jesus told the disciples what? It's not his sin. It's not his parents' sin. But that the glory of God to be shown. That God will be glorifying him. And Jesus healed this man. So this go against the teaching of the Quran. Allah did not create people to see because He knows if they see, they'll still be blind. He did not create them to hear because if they hear, they still will not be able to understand or to be uh, effective for Him, to believe in Him. But here is the opposite. In the Bible, the man could not hear, could not see, could not talk, whatever, could not walk, could not move his hand. And all these different people, even the death, when Jesus raised him from the dead, as, as in the case of Lazarus, God glory has been shown and, and these people who were healed, brought glory to God, they honor God, they worship God, they believe in Jesus. That is the opposite of the message of hope in oh. Islam. There is no hope in Islam. Even they have no respect for those who are born with whatever sickness, handicap. They say, well, it is Allah will. Allah really wanted them to be handicapped mm -hmm. because they're not good anyway. What is the hope, Brother Brandon? Well, there's no hope in many of their countries. Their, their uh, men can't find employment, correct? Unemployment is very high in it's many Muslim unbelievable. nations. It's unbelievable. Beyond measure. Which is why they have such an easy time finding people willing to be involved as suicide bombers, right? Well, because it's a, hopeless, it's a hopeless religion that promises 72 virgins when you kill yourself. Maybe that is the only hope they have. If I blow myself apart in a bomb and kill some infidels, I get to paradise and I meet this uh, 72 forever virgins. God help us. Not only Islam, there's no equality between Muslims and non-Muslims. In Islam, there's no equality between a Muslim man, a Muslim slave, 
and a Muslim woman. Hmm. Let's read what Allah said in Quran chapter 2 and verse 178. Allah said, O oh, you who have believed, the retaliation is decreed on you from the murdered, the free man from the free, and the slave from the slave, and the female from the female. Brother Brandon, that is the most barbaric verse I ever heard in my life. I never read anything as worse than that. And sadly, if you give this verse right now to any Muslim and ask him to read, he will read it. And he will see nothing wrong in it. After all, it's Allah's word. Muslims don't question uh, whatever written in the Quran or whatever said by the Muhammad in the Hadith. Allah taught them in Quran chapter 5, verse 101, I believe. It says, do not ask question. If you ask question, you become an infidel. It's like he tell you, well, if you ever talk to yourself and said, where come, where, uh, who was on earth before God uh, created the human? There were nobody. Okay, before God created the angels, who was there? Was God? Who created God? Uh, where did God come from? And if you meditate on this, you go crazy. You start losing your your uh, belief in God. Similar idea about anything in Islam. If you ask anything, this will lead you to become an infidel. Muslim claim. Now, in this verse, let me give you the simple, uh, easy way to understand it. If I kill one of your slave and I'm a free man, to retaliate, you have no right. To kill me, the slave, the, the owner of the slave, but you have to eat, to pick up one of my slave equal to your slave, same age, close to the age, and kill him. So you're killing an innocent slave because some master killed one of your slave. Hmm. If I kill the, if one of my slave kill you, and you're a, you're a free man, now your family, to revenge, they must kill me, the owner, the free man who did nothing to harm you or to anybody of your family. So they, they, your family will kill me, the free man, not my slave who killed you. And if I killed your wife, now you have no right to touch me or my son or my daughter, but you only can kill my wife. You have to revenge equal to that which you have lost. Where is the justice here? Where is the equality here? Where is the hope of Islam here? It's a joke. And because of this tradition, the way of life in Islam, as it is written in the Quran, it's not culture. That's Allah's command. You go to Egypt, we have so many programs in Egypt, TV shows and movies, and trying, the government of Egypt trying to take this belief out of the heart and the mind and soul of the Muslims and shows them, you know, here is two family, this, this people kill one of them by accident, maybe car accident or something, they revenge, kill another guy, he revenge, kill two, two kill four, four, and then show you in the end of the, four, the movie that the boss family, an old man and his wife, an old man and his wife, they're crying because they lost all their children and their grandchildren. So you're saying that the, the Egyptian, the Islamic government in Egypt mm -hmm. tries to make movies and things to get them to stop doing this. Because they're trying to teach them through the movies that this retaliation Doesn't is not work. good. Okay. It does not work. It's, it brings destruction. But, but you, you basically then have Muslims that are teaching against the Quran. Is that right? Well, because they're ignorant mm -hmm. of Quran chapter 2 verse 178. And after that, if you look at all what's going on between Iraq and Iran for years, even in Iraq today, you see a Sunni go blow up a Shia mosque. Well, the Shia did not catch the people who did the crime, no. The Shia found an equal mosque that, to that which they have lost, and they blow up a bomb in another mosque. So just so people and understand like, how this is unjust, yeah. if, if you were to kill someone's slave, they wouldn't come to kill you. No, no. They would kill your innocent, your innocent one slave. One of my innocent slaves. Because so there's the, the lack of justice isn't, we're going to bring you know, capital punishment on the one that did the crime. The one that did the crime doesn't get is it the one that's punished? It's an innocent person that Somebody pays. Somebody else. And that is exactly what's happening. By the way, I investigate your, uh, your, what you shared with me in a, in a previous program about the killing of an American young man. Did you man. investigate that? Absolutely. Tell me about it. What'd it you is find true. Out? It is a young man. He's a college kid. Uh, I believe he's 18 years old that's or something right. like that. That's right. And he was killed by this American and Muslim because simply he killed four, of them, by the way, because he is retaliating for the American involvement in Iraq and Afghanistan. You American people are killing people in the Middle East. Therefore, he as a good Muslim believer, American Muslim believers, have the right to kill as much as he can in America to bring the retaliation. And same, this just happened recently, right? This is just a few days ago. Same thing what we're reading about in Quran chapter 2, verse 178. That's why I said. And yet the media hasn't covered this really no, other than Fox it News. It was on Fox News again last night and I investigated, looked at it, I looked it up. And it's true. It's not just Fox. It's 100% facts. The man is in court already. Is a black brother who's a Muslim who did this killing. Now, if you will not put this with the teaching of the Quran, you may think this guy's crazy. But when you look at what Allah said in Quran chapter 2, verse 178, we just read, you'll find out that he is doing exactly what Allah is telling him. And Muslims in America 
will retaliate for every man and every woman and every child who was killed in the last 13 years in war. And Muslim in America will retaliate for every man and every woman, every child will be killed in the next war which we have right now against ISIS. This thing will never end. Okay, so tell me this. The average American watching right now and listening right now is thinking basically, Usama, what you're saying is at some point, m Muslims who live out what the Quran teaches We'll, we'll, we'll start murdering in greater numbers innocent Americans as we see this man outside so of New York. You, just you doing. say what? Innocent America. To the Muslims, it's not innocent. To the Muslim, he is fulfilling his duty before Allah to retaliate for the killing of his brother and his mother and his sister and every Muslim in the Middle East. Do you see a civil war coming to America? A big one. And how soon do you see that civil war coming? Anytime. And what, Anytime. Will this, what, will be, what will be involved in this civil war? A lots of killing, a lots of it will shit and block every state in America. And I believe And who will declare it? Will the Imams declare it? The Muslim ISIS who are all over America. They are here. They are Muslims. Even if we say only 10% of the Muslim, I'm not going to say 20%, which I know is more than, if we say only 10% of the Muslim in America are true believers, those who will believe in jihad, as we're going to talk about jihad in the next broadcast here, you will see that these 10% is over a million. Don't forget, September 11 was only 19%. We're talking about at least over a million Muslim in America will practice the retaliation as Allah stated. If you had just 10% of the Muslims in America believe in jihad, you'd have over a million people involved Absolutely. in jihad. No doubt. How is, how is... So 19 plus, time it. Right. And, time it. And the other thing we have is the conversion rate of people in America converting to Islam, particularly in the prisons, black Americans converting to Islam in high numbers in the prisons. Yes. They're already angry at America. They've been, they've been Brother, indoctrinated with- They're not Muslims because they love Islam. They're not becoming Muslim because they read the Quran. They're becoming Muslim for one reason, Hatred one reason only. They hate the white judge. They hate the white officer. They hate the white. They hate your ancestors who maybe have nothing to do with anything. You're white, that means for them. Someday, years ago, your ancestors enslaved their ancestors, and that's why there's hatred in their heart. So basically what <clears> you're <throat> saying is many of the black uh, uh, population is converting to Islam because of their racism toward whites. Absolutely. Okay. I, I, brother, Ren, Ren, I talked to them myself in prisons for years, years ago, before I even started the new, the straightway ministry. When I was to, used to go to prison with Brother Art and uh, different churches in Virginia. As a prison Central, ministry. As a prison ministry. I talked to these people. Some of the Arab Muslims were there. They told me, Usama, they are not Muslims. You are wasting your time. These are black who hate white. That's why they are becoming Muslims. Nation of Islam is a good four and, four and a half to five million. They are all hate Islam. When the civil war starts, you're gonna have at least five million American nation of Islam. Those will, ha will carry the arms and they'll be shooting okay, whites. You, you say that one more time. At least between four and a half to five million Muslim nation of Islam in America, this is a lowest for a calm people. Five million will be carrying arms to shoot and kill the white American at least. Nation of Islam. Yes, American Muslims. Well we, we had a, well, we had a, you were at a million while ago. How'd you get to four to five million? That's a five million. These are the black Muslim for sure who hate everyone. Oh, the black, okay. So you um, add the, the Muslims and the black. The one million is the, is the foreigner Muslims. Okay. So, so, you, so wait a minute. the one million is the foreign Muslims that are here in the U.S.? 10% of the foreign Muslims. Okay. And then the four to five million. That's a, the, the, one, the American, which you cannot do anything about it. You cannot even kick them out of your country because they're Americans by birth. So, it's so, so when we see this, this uh, racism that's rising in America through white privilege, indoctrination, education, and, and, and the, the, you know, saying that uh, if you're a capitalist, you're a racist. If you're a Christian, hold Christian values, you're a racist. And we've, we've showed the video clips that are teaching this yeah. to educators who then turn around and teach it to school kids. And they don't bother to mention the fact that most Americans never had anything to do with slavery. Their relatives had nothing to do with slavery. Mm -hmm. And that, in fact, here uh, in the Alabama South, there were, in the Alabama South, there were 3,000 black slave owners. Yeah, that's 3,000 black slave owners. Yeah. But none of this is about history because what this is about, ultimately, Usama, is the Marxist and the Muslims working to defeat their shared enemy. Israel, America. America. Yes, so it's right. the Marxists and the Muslims working together. Mm -hmm. The Marxists have indoctrinated black, um, many black Americans and white Americans in this indoctrination. Mm -hmm. Now the Muslims come along and harvest that hatred and recruit them to Islam. Absolutely. And it's not only going to be the black Americans, it will be increasing white Americans based on class warfare, it right? Is, it is absolutely true. Absolutely. 
Well, Brother Brennan, we have another lie about the history of Islam in America. And World History, Thompson, uh, Wadsworth, 2004, page 218. This chapter on Africa tells how Arab forces invaded and controlled Egypt. Then it says in the next paragraph, the Arab conquerors were probably welcomed by many, if not the majority, of the local inhabitants. Mentioning Egypt and the Egyptian welcomed the Muslim is a nonsense. Nothing of this lie has been ever, ever came to be a true thing in the history of Egypt. That's a propaganda. That's a lie. And the answer for that is I will share with you what the great Muslim scholar Al-Tabri said about the Arabs, conquerors, who came to Egypt. Here it is, his own word, the great Muslim scholar Al-Tabri. And this is in the Hadith? That is, no, that's a scholar who teach, uh, who interprets the verses of the Quran. Okay. Al-Tabri, yes. And he wrote this, Arabs mm. are the most noble people in lineage, the most prominent and the best in deeds. We were the first to respond to the call of the prophet. We are Allah's helpers and the viziers of his messenger. We engage in war with people until they believe in Allah. <laughs> we engage in war with people until they believe in Allah. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. He who believes in Allah and his messenger has, pro has protected his life and possessions from us. And for one who disbelieves, will engage in war with him forever in the cause of Allah, killing him as is a small matter to us. That is a true teaching about the Arabs, the conquerors. And that's coming from a Muslim scholar. The great Muslim scholar, Al-Tabri, please. Don't say just a Muslim scholar. He's a great Muslim scholar. That's what they call him, a great Absolutely. Muslim. Absolutely. And so he's in favor of this. Absolutely. He's not just and, explaining and it, he's not, promoting it. And there's not one Muslim who says that's not true. So where, can you see that? Why can't we teach this to our children instead of that uh, the Arab conquerors, when they went to Egypt, Egyptians were so happy dancing hallelujah in the streets. Killing us is a small matter to the Muslims. Killing American is a small matter to the Muslims. And they will engage in war with us for the sake of Allah, for the cause of Allah forever. This war just started. Just go ahead, Obama. Go ahead, McCain. Give the Muslims some weapon to help us to get rid of the other Muslims, which, by the way, the same weapon will be used to get, to get rid of us. And make sure it's people understand what you're talking about. What you're talking about is our American military arming the so-called rebels in Syria. Brother, we should never give a gun or a bullet to any Muslim. I don't care what name you give them, because this bullet will be used against us in the near future. But that's what's happening. They're arm, so-called arming the rebels Have against learned, Assad you know, in Syria, yeah. and yeah. now they're fighting Americans with those Here's my question. Have, you know what insane is? To do the same mistakes, expecting a different result. Is it not exactly what we did to the Mujahideen? Didn't we train bin Laden? Did we give the weapon to the Mujahideen? What happened to this weapon? It was used against us to kill our soldiers. What? 30, 40 years later. Whatever weapon we give to, to any Muslim country, if it's Egypt or any rebels or any Muslim group, this weapon will be used against our Christian brothers and sisters in the Middle East, and it will be used against us if we ever dare in the future to go in war with these countries. It is a bad, bad mistake. It cannot be fixed with bullets. I don't know. Uh, how can we get this truth to the people? All right, so that's pretty much, we're almost out of time here, Usama. Uh, we're going to have to pick up on our next program. Absolutely, I would love to do that. But we have to understand that this brainwashing of our children, we are going to be paying for it. We're worried about few of the Muslims who come into America through the uh, borders or uh, uh, those who are uh, coming to America with in, in many other ways as Obama is bringing them in the hundreds of thousands. How about our children? You know, we hear that we hear in the past about jihadi Jane and jihadi mm -hmm. this and jihad. These are Americans are becoming Muslims are becoming jihadi. How about our own children? For heaven's sake, we're allowing all our mm. children in our public schools to be brainwashed with this lies about Islam. And Muslims are doing this for one reason, one reason only to make the new generation in America to be Muslims. And if our children become Muslims to, because they believe in this loving, peaceful Islam, the true propaganda history of Islam, then guess what, Brandon? Their children will grow up in a double number or triple number. Now we got the 100 million Muslims in America, which means what? Another Muslim imam will stand up to speak to these children who are now Muslims, the children of American Muslims, and they will open the Quran and show them the real Islam. We're talking about reformation in America. And that's when you kiss America goodbye. And this could happen just one generation after another. We're not talking about hundreds of years. We're talking about these children are Muslims in our public schools. Their children will become Muslims. Their children will become real Muslims through the uh, reformation. And then you kiss America goodbye. 
TheStraightWay.org is Usama's website, TheStraightWay.org. Again, many um, organizations and broadcast networks will not put out this information. As mm. you can see, it's rather controversial, but uh, oftentimes the truth is, is it not? His website, again, TheStraightWay.org. Hope you'll tell your friends about the broadcast and the way that they can watch it through our free app at worldviewweekend.com forward slash app, worldviewweekend.com forward slash app. We, we post-produce these programs. We put them out there as a ministry of Worldview Weekend, Worldview Weekend Foundation, and the Straight Way uh, ministry. And then after a few days, it does roll into the Situation Room. And if you'd like to go back in and watch all the collection of these um, uh, interviews, you can do that. Uh, in the Situation Room at situationroom.net, situationroom.net. Now, again, we look forward to our next program with Usama Dakdok. But till then, I'm Brandon House for Usama Dakdok. Take care.